Hello and welcome to this edition of the eClinical Works podcast. I'm Adam Silati. If you've been to one of our national conferences, you know that eClinical Works is always keeping up with industry trends and looking ahead to what's next. And, that's, and this year is no different with the advent and the passage of MACRA, the Medicare Access and CHIP Reauthorization Act. And here to speak with me about that today is Rohan D'Souza from our population health team to try to fill in some of the gaps that uh, might be there from and questions that you might have uh, regarding this program. Rohan, thanks for being here. Thank you, Adam, for having me, and I hope I can do justice to this really, really big topic. Knowing you, I'm sure you'll do a great <laughs> job, Rohan. Um, so let's just start off with, with what MACRA is, because we've seen some surveys out there that might indicate that, that people don't even fully know what this program is and what it means to them. Yeah, Adam, so uh, you're absolutely right. There is a lot of anxiety. I feel like even though we're in election season, maybe the next talked about item is, is MACRA. Uh, really what MACRA is, as you mentioned, it's the Medicare Access and CHIP Reauthorization Act. Uh, it really is your biggest change to payment reform that's coming uh, to providers and health systems. That's going to impact almost everyone. Uh, and it really is removing a flawed or a hotly debated and contested way of reimbursing uh, called the SGR or the Sustainable Growth Rate. Uh, and it's taking that away. So. You know, Congress and folks in healthcare policy have been really working on this, I would say, for the last three to four years. Uh, we saw an interim rule that came out a couple months ago, uh, and the final ruling just dropped on us about two weeks ago, in fact, a week before our national conference. Right, there's a lot to do to get ready for that. But, of course, MACRA doesn't just repeal the SGR. It also makes some fundamental changes to the way that providers are paid for their their time and their work, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think the jury's out that Medicare really wants to move people towards reimbursement towards a value perspective versus a quantity perspective. I mean, you hear these words being used a lot called value-based payments, accountable care organizations. I think MACRA is really that first taking a, you know, a broad brushstroke across the entire country with reimbursement and saying, we're going to try to make reimbursement tied to the quality of care that's being delivered and really not towards necessarily the quantity of care uh, that's being delivered. And that's, that's sort of the, the biggest change uh, that we're seeing. The, the other thing um, that really is coming to light with MACRA is that I think CMS took note of a lot of the challenges that happened in previous programs, specifically with meaningful use, PQRS, and the value modifier. Uh, assuming that these were, or looking at the, these as being three separate programs, MACRA really likes to put these things together. Right, Com combining those separate programs into one, of course, is a big thing here with, with MACRA. But with all of this change that we're talking about, all of these reorganization type activities that are going on, um, I think the big question that people are going to have and the thing that we should answer first is, do we have to be worried? Do providers have to be worried about this change? Yeah, that's a good question, Adam. Um, you know, obviously we're biased towards um, our, our uh, company and eClinical Works, and uh, our message is no, you should not be worried about MACRA. Um, it really is um, a program that is going through a modification. Uh, and the biggest message that we want to give practices is you're already used to doing a lot of these things. You know, practices are already well aware of the word meaningful use. Uh, whether you've been doing PQRS or whether you have not been doing PQRS, more than likely you know what PQRS is. Um, and folks are well aware of their QR, UR reports and what's been happening with the value modifier. Um, the real thing with MACRA is a lot of this anxiety around, oh my God, is this a completely new program? When in reality, uh, it's the consolidation of these three programs with the addition of a new flavor, really around protocol and process changes, to come to one consolidated program uh, called, a, called a quality payment program, or QPP, specifically under the MIP side of MACRA. So, you know, there, there is a lot of anxiety out there. People are nervous. You know, you hear these podcasts, um, not by us, but podcasts across the industry that are talking about uh, MACRA is going to be really, really challenging and you must be doing something about it now or you're not going to survive. Um, if you listen to what CMS is saying, uh, specifically what uh, uh, Andy Slavitt has done as acting administrator of CMS, has really gone out and said, folks, we're actually making this easier. We are going to value those people 
or reward those people who really believe in value-based care, who really believe in succeeding as a, a primary care office or a specialty office as a small independent provider. You don't have to attach yourself to a large health system or these bigger delivery networks in order to succeed, which is sort of what the message is being portrayed depending on who you talk to. Uh, definitely, we'll be talking more about the, the final rule in just a bit here, but let's get into, and, and of course, how that final rule affects uh, different groups like specialists, perhaps. Um, but let's get into the, the different tracks and the different paths that are available, right? What, what does this look like when the, uh, when the rubber hits the road or, or you know, when, the, when everything hits the fan, I should say? Um, and and how, does, how are we going to be organizing ourselves under this program? Sure. A great question, Adam. I mean, uh, if we look at it as uh, we're at a junction and uh, we've got two options, you know, we've got a path that goes left and one that goes right. Um, one of it is where most of the folks are going to go down, which is what uh, CMS is calling uh, as the MIPS track or the Merit Based Incentive Payment System. Um, the other track is the Advanced Alternative Payment Model side. Uh, the interesting thing to note is that people can jump back and forth between these tracks depending on qualifications or depending on enrollment periods. Uh, so these paths will eventually come together as options. It's almost like you're getting on an HOV lane and you can get off if you want to, but you can also get back on that HOV lane if you decide that the track I'm on now allows me to go back to take on some more risk. So let's focus on MIPS. Uh, MIPS is really where CMS believes most of the folks are going to go down um, and it's really that track that is going to focus on almost every single provider in this country uh, other than the ones that might need an exception such as you know billing less than thirty thousand uh, dollars with fee-for-service Medicare or have a hundred or less patients maybe they're an FQHC or an RHC um, you know or, or um, maybe they're in an advanced alternative payment model or this is their first year of running their practice under Medicare eligibility. But for everyone else, you're gonna report under MIPS. Uh, MIPS includes four options. It's allowing you to focus on taking in that uh, meaningful use criteria that's being rebranded now. It's being called uh, Advancing Care Information, or ACI. Uh, PQRS is being rebranded as quality. Uh, and of course, your value modifier is gonna be rebranded as cost with the inclusion of this new category called Improvement Activities. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about APMs, I'm guessing, a little later, so we'll table that uh, for, uh, for a little later in the discussion. Of course, yeah, we'll get, get in some more details about that. Um, but we should probably mention that APMs, or Advanced Alternative Payment Models, really do the same things that we just mentioned, those same four categories, but those, it's, it's almost like CMS is outsourcing that measurement and that, that uh, management to these Advanced Alternative Payment Models, which is why you can get out of the MIPS track if you are in a, a qualifying advanced APM. Um, how is the performance measurement, and how is the, the management of this program different than in previous years or in previous programs? Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a very common question we get asked, right? Uh, you're telling me, Rohan, that this is very similar to what I used to do, uh, but there must be something different, right? So uh, the key difference is what we already talked about is the consolidation of these three programs. Uh, so now instead of looking at PQRS as a program in itself, looking at meaningful use as a program in itself, and looking at the value modifier as a program in itself. Under MIPS, we're combining, or I should say CMS is combining these three programs into one single program called the QPP or the Quality Payment Program. So what essentially is going to happen here is we're adding, it's sort of like a mathematical equation. Uh, every practice is going to get a score at the end of the reporting period. And that score is going to be dependent on these individual variables. So each of these variables hold a certain amount of weight. And these weights change as we progress through the program. Uh, some increase and some decrease. Um, and then eventually, your, your individual score within these categories apply towards your final score. So think of it as a semester-long course you're taking. Uh, and you're taking multiple classes, eventually your grade point average in the end is dependent on how you perform across the board with those categories. To simplify things under MIPS, we've got a quality category, which is really your PQRS category that makes up 60% of the overall weight. We've then got an ACI category, or Advancing Care Information, which is nothing but meaningful use, 
which makes up 25% of the overall weight. And then you've got your final category in 2017, which is new for most people, but those in patient-centered medical home, it's something they're very used to, called improvement activities. And these are really just process and protocol changes that are being applied across the board. There's that little cost component that have, we haven't talked about, uh, which actually is still being calculated by Medicare, uh, but will not be applied into the practice score uh, measurement calculation in the year 2017. And the other big difference, Adam, is that uh, the, negative val uh, the, the negative payment adjustment in this consolidated program is actually much lower than if you were to consider these three programs individual of each other. You know, like if we looked at PQRS, meaningful use, and the value modifier as three separate programs in the pre-macro world, you could stand to lose almost 11% of your overall payment structure versus under macro, when we consolidate this, the maximum you can lose is really 4%. And that's for practices who are just going to say, we're not going to do anything with MIPS. Everyone else should be just fine uh, under this new macro uh, legislation. And, and while you're mentioning these, these adjustments, it's important to note, I think, that uh, as opposed to meaningful use, where uh, practices were paid maybe a, a lump sum incentive based on you know, their collections, um, now under MACRA, there's going to be a performance year where they're measured on, on their activities and, their, and their, their quality measures, et cetera. And then later on, two years after that, will be a payment year. Uh, so there's a lag between your performance and your payment. And instead of that lump sum, the payment uh, year will be adjustments to each of your claims that are submitted. So if you make a positive adjustment, all of your claims will have that positive adjustment. And if you have a negative adjustment, all of your claims will have that negative adjustment as well. Um, and then while we're talking about performance, uh, this is also a little bit different to programs that have been in the past because uh, we're not going to be evaluated in a vacuum. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're going to be now compared against your peers across the entire country. So again, to use a, to use a college or a school analogy, uh, you know, you always hoped for the curve shifting in your favor when you score poorly. Right? But in, um, if you were in those situations where you're sort of in the average, but the average is actually really good, uh, it's sort of what's going to happen with macro. You know, as people are going to start to become better about these things, whether it's quality, whether it's improvement activities, whether it's care coordination, care management, putting people in place, uh, the, this herd mentality of people actually delivering better care towards value is going to start to shift the curve more right which means that average point of maybe in year one, when we talk about reimbursement, which will kick in in 2019, uh, you might be in that plus 4% of an increase. Uh, but if you don't keep up and if you don't improve, uh, basically you don't want to become complacent just because you achieved that highest level in year one, because things are going to move in the direction of the positive versus the direction of the negative. Uh, continuous improvement, I think, is a theme there, and that's all the more reason for practices to get started sooner rather than later, uh, making sure that they're aware of these things and understand these things. Um, now, let's talk about uh, talking about getting started sooner or later. Um, CMS has given practices some flexibility here with how they begin to transition into this program. Yeah, and this was uh, one of the things that CMS received the most amount of comments on. Uh, when the initial ruling of MACRA came out, uh, it was an all or nothing start January 1, 2017. Uh, and the guys at CMS, I think, did a really good job of keeping the comment period open. There were almost 50,000 or 5,000 individual comments that were received from organizations like the AMA, the AAFP, consulting companies, House Republicans, House Democrats. They all actually commented uh, on the MACRA legislation to which Andy Slavitt, a couple days or a couple of weeks before the final ruling came out, put out a blog post and said, uh, we at CMS are going to allow practices to take a little bit of a phased approach to reporting under MACRA, or specifically under MIPS. And, and when the final ruling came out, we got more light of that. Um, and basically what CMS is saying is that if you are a provider or if you are a practice, you are now going to get four options to pick from. Uh, for reporting under MIPS. 
we'll, talk, we'll give you option one, which is basically do a little bit of something. Uh, if you just select one quality measure, you will at least be guaranteed a plus 0.5% increase uh, in your payment modification that will kick in in 2019. Uh, this is really for those practices that just feel like they're not ready. Maybe they're in a shift year or a transition year. Uh, you know, CMS is calling this an on-ramp year. It's really sort of like you're on the on-ramp to get on onto the main highway, which will be 2018 and onwards. Uh, so it's really giving you that slow approach onto the big scale uh, of macro. Uh, you pick any period of time, and as long as you pick your small 90-day period and report one quality measure, like I said, you'll avoid that negative adjustment. Uh, under option two, CMS is saying uh, this, this is for practices that feel like they want to test their model out. Essentially for those practices that might introduce new processes and protocols in the first half of the year, and start to report for MIPS into the second half of the year. So these are for those guys who believe in that feedback loop mechanism, right? They're gonna put in a practice, uh, by practice I mean a protocol change, quality measurement calculation, and then towards the second half of the year, they'll select their 90-day period, pick their quality measures that they wanna report under the 270 that are available, report under the ACI, might pick some improvement activities, and start to see what's working and what's not working. So they can go back and modify. Option three is where CMS actually believes most practices are today, but not maybe all of them will report under this category. And for, these are for those guys who believe they're 100% ready to go, which means you have your minimum 90-day period, but the longer day range you select, the likelihood of you getting that positive payment adjustment is that much higher. So you would pick the most amount of quality measures, you would pick your biggest date range, and you will more than likely see a pretty substantial increase in your payout structure starting 2019. And the last one, Adam, is uh, the advanced alternative payment model side. So it's like you're a provider and you really don't want to take part in all of this, we'll call this a conundrum under MIPS. Uh, you would fall under the alternative or advanced alternative payment model side, where if you're in an ACO or and you're in a CPC plus region, or you're in one of those bundles or PCMH type models, um, you can enter into these programs beginning 2017, 2018, and basically bypass, uh, bypass the MIPS initiative. We're gonna break this podcast up into two parts. So make sure you come back for part two where Rohan and I continue to discuss MACRA, MIPS, APMs, what it means for you, our viewers, and our clients. You can check out our other podcasts on YouTube, iTunes, or my.eclinicalworks.com. For the Clinical Works podcast, I'm Adam Salati. This broadcast and its contents are the sole property of eClinical Works and are protected by federal law and international treaties. You are strictly prohibited from making a copy of, modification of, or form of rebroadcasting or re encoding this broadcast without prior written permission from eClinical Works Public Relations, except as many be permitted by law. This broadcast is provided for informational purposes only. It is intended as a personal, non commercial use. Product specifications are subject to change without notice. Please contact eClinical Works Public Relations with any questions. eClinical Works V10 EHR is ONC HIT 2014 edition certified as a complete EHR. eClinical Works V10 CC 2014 95 54 47 1.